Good evening and welcome. Let me ask you something. Do you seem like you're always finding yourselves in the tall weeds, not sure which way to go? Well, we're going to talk about that. But before we do, let's have a time of worship together. So finding ourselves in the tall weeds, like that poor guy in the picture there on the side of the screen, and that guy looks like me because he's looking for a golf ball, and it seems like I spend a lot of time looking for golf balls. But you know, life kind of throws us a curveball. You know, there's not a week that goes by that somebody isn't contacting me, sending me a message, calling me, messaging me, telling me about something that's going on, asking for my prayers and for our ministry to be praying for them. And sometimes the weeds get tall. Sometimes life happens. But I'm here today to encourage you not to allow the weeds to be your focus, not to allow your circumstances to be your focus. 
Turn with me to John 16. John 16.33. Now, it's not just our generation or our world today that's concerned about what's going on around us. Back in Jesus' day, the disciples were just as concerned. And Jesus said this too, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. That should encourage us alone, brothers and sisters. You know, sometimes we end up in the tall weeds for no reason of our own. I think about one of my brothers that's on the ministry team that you see singing and you haven't seen for the last month or so, Brother Marshall. He's in the hospital right now struggling on a ventilator and his wife and family around him. And we're praying that he pulls through. We're praying that God would touch him and heal him. He didn't end up there for any reason of his own. Yet he's there. Yet he's having a trial. But we are there to encourage him. To remind him who is in control. You know, I, I thought about that this week while I was golfing. You know, the picture that's on the side of the screen there is kind of me. I have a lot of golf clubs. A lot of golf clubs. I have a really nice driver and a beautiful set of irons. And, you know, I'll go through a round of golf and not use half of the clubs that are in there, depending on what course I'm playing. But you know what? This club here, I use every time I play. Every time I play. Because like that poor guy you see there, I always find myself somewhere along the line in the tall weeds. This is not called an iron or a fairway wood or a driver. It's called a rescue club. And I use this on every round. As you can see, it's scratched up and beat up and it's got green all over it and dirt all over it because I use it to get out of trouble. And it seems like no matter how hard I practice, no matter what I do, I find myself on every round of golf in trouble along the way somewhere. It's called life. Sometimes we end up in the weeds because we don't follow directions. Now, I just shared with the boys and girls just a little bit ago the story of Naaman. As you remember, Naaman was a soldier. He was in charge. He won a lot of battles. He was famous. And he thought he had everything. But he had an issue called leprosy, where your skin begins to rot. And so he asked the king to help him. And the king suggested that he go see a prophet. A prophet. And so he went to see Elijah, because Elijah said that he could heal him, he could cure him. And so Naaman took his guards with him, his army with him, his soldiers with him, and off he went to see Elijah. Now when he got there, he figured that Elijah would come out being a prophet, which is like being a religious leader, would come out and wave over him or touch him or anoint him with oil or do something to cure him. But he didn't do that. He sent one of his servants to meet Naaman. And he said, Elijah the prophet told me to tell you to go to the Jordan River and dip seven times. Well, this infuriated Naaman. What's the matter with the water where I live? Our rivers are cleaner than your rivers. And he went away mad. But as he was going away, one of his soldiers that were with him said, if the prophet had asked you to do something hard, 
wouldn't you have done it? Does it hurt to just go and try to do what he said to do? Finally, he convinced Naaman to go and do what he said to do. And so Naaman went to the Jordan River, got in the river, dipped seven times, and on the seventh time, he was clean. The leprosy was gone and he was healed. Simply following directions. How hard is that? I was sharing with the boys and girls. We all know what this is, right? Instant oatmeal. Well, the other day I felt like I wanted some oatmeal. One of my favorite things that my mom used to make me was oatmeal. I loved it. And I got this box out and it said, put it in milk and put it in the microwave. And I'm thinking, is that it? There's got to be more to it than that. But I thought, well, I'd give it a try. And so I got the milk. I dumped a packet in, put it in the microwave. When it came out, I stirred it, thinking it was going to taste like cardboard. I took a bite, and it was wonderful. And it was wonderful. And all I had to do was follow the directions. Two simple things. A glass of milk, dump it in, and put it in the microwave. How often do we want to complicate things? Or do we want to try everything that we can think of to fix the problem, to solve the issue, or whatever we're going through at that time? We want to do everything except the one thing we should be doing, and that's asking God for help. Asking Him for His directions. And lastly, sometimes we forget where our peace comes from. Where does our peace come from? Turn again with me back to John 16.33. I have told you these things. This is Jesus talking to the disciples back then and talking to his modern day disciples, you and I. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace in this world you will have trouble but take heart for i have overcome the world what jesus is telling us there is that even through the difficult times we can have peace through him and it's right in front of us sometimes we can't see the trees because of the forest but it's right in front of us what do we do when we're in the tall weeds? I changed hats purposely, brothers and sisters. It's right in front of us. He can solve all of our problems. Let's trust Him to carry us through the difficult times that we will face. And through it all, we will have peace. The one had a prison down the hallway to his doom. I stood up to say goodbye.
Before I die I recall that Sunday morning A choir from all the streets Came in to sing a few old gospel songs And I heard her Could I hear once before you alone? Let them sing me back home with a song I used to hear. Make my old memories come alive. To a place called Calvary Where they hung him on a cross for all to see He cried, Father, please forgive them For they know not what they do When the solid ground is falling out from underneath my feet Between the black skies and my red eyes I can bear to see And when I'm feeling like I've been let down by my friends and family I can feel the rain reminding me In the eye of the storm you remain in control in the middle of the war you guard my soul you alone are the anchor when my sails are torn your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm When my hopes and dreams are far from me and I'm running out of faith I see the future, I picture, slowly fade away And when the tears of pain and heartache are pounding down my face I find my peace in Jesus' name In the eye of the storm you remain in control in 
in the middle of the war you guard my soul you alone are the anchor when my sails are torn your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm just don't know how I'm gonna make ends meet I did my best now I'm scared to death that I might lose everything and when my sickness takes my child away and there's nothing I can do my only hope is to trust in you I trust you Lord in the eye of the storm you remain in control in the middle of the war you guard my soul you alone are the anchor when my sails are torn your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm in the eye of the storm you remain in control in the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. Your love surrounds me. In the eye of the storm. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for reminding us that through your Son, through his guidance and through his direction, we have a rescue. We have a rescue club. Just like when you're playing golf and you get into tall weeds or when you go through an issue and you can't see the trees because of the forest. Sometimes we forget that through your son, we have freedom. And through your son, we have peace. Thank you, Father, for that gift. And for everything, we will praise you and give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. The next time you're in the tall weeds, remember your rescue club and remember who that is. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you next week. I pray you have an awesome week and I'll see you soon.